What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dr. V Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Verga. Uh, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about emergency preparedness, emergency management, because where I live, this is uh, fire season. Honestly, it's always fire season in California. And I'm sure, you know, now we have hurricane season coming up. So I wanted to go over kind of the basic supplies you should have in your emergency preparedness kit. I wanted to go through emergency preparedness in general. And then if you guys could only see the mess I have in front of me right now, but I'm going to be sharing all of the things that I keep in my emergency preparedness kit as a professional emergency preparedness manager, as a physical security specialist, and as a newer member to my local search and rescue team. When I say newer, I've been on the team for about two years, kind of involved on and off because of work. However, I have learned a ton I've been on a few missions that have really, really impacted me as it relates to being prepared all of the time, not just with the things that I'm carrying, but with the skill set that I have, that I hone and that I sharpen. Let's get into it. So before we begin, I wanted to just say a couple of things. Ready.gov. FEMA, which is the Federal Emergency Management Agency, they have kind of a basic disaster supplies kit. I've kind of taken that and like jacked it up. So it's like this basic kit on steroids because I am a backpacker, hiker, bush crafter, if you will. I'm not necessarily a prepper because I feel like most preppers are prepared for some sort of like cataclysmic world ending event, usually as a result of like war. And I'm just prepared for anything. I call it being prepared for anything. Whether it's a natural disaster or a man-made event, I just want to make sure that I'm prepared. And not because I'm always carrying an axe on me, but to have the skill set to be able to just, me, my person, go into any situation, urban or wilderness, and be able to survive with the things that are around me. Today, I'm not going to get into any particular skill set or teach you any of these skills because not everybody is watching this and people are listening to this. But if you want me to go into any particular skill set that I mention or any particular skill that I mention, please let me know. Like bushcrafting is a skill set that I can absolutely talk about or I can talk about building a fire, right? That's a skill within a bushcrafting skill set. So with that, Let's start with the basic disaster supply kit that is provided by Ready.gov and FEMA. And then I'll kind of go into kind of some options. So the first thing on their list is water, specifically one gallon per person per day for at least three days for drinking and sanitation. Obviously, hygiene is extremely important in the backcountry and in an emergency situation, reduces your likelihood of getting infections and diseases and, and that sort of stuff but you might not be able to carry three gallons of water. Like if it's for me and I'm running out of my house, I'm not carrying six gallons of water. Hey, did you guys know that at the end of this video, there is a riddle and there has been a riddle at the end of every single one of my videos every single week. Now in the past, I would leave you guys the answers. I have decided to remove the answers from being at the end screen and now the first person to correctly answer the riddle in the comments below, I will pin that comment. And maybe one day when this channel grows and I get some sponsors, I'll be able to give you guys some free stuff for guessing the riddle correctly. But with that, let's get back into the video. Right, and I say, and I say six because it's three for me, three for my dog. So I'm going to carry a way to filter water while I'm displaced. Which brings me to my next point real quick. Uh, quick note. I'm just going to be talking about my home kit. I personally have a kit at home, in my car, and at work. So as I talk about these things, just know that they are in three places. So everything that I have at home, I have at work and I have in my car. My car kit has some car specific items, like a way to jump my battery and, and all of that good stuff. A way to repair my car if I need to, even though it's brand new. But um, that car kit is a little bit different and I'll cover a car kit in a separate video. The other types of kits that you might hear are things like get me home bags. And a lot of people on the internet will have these caches or these kits essentially 
that get them to a secure point. So maybe you have a cabin that you like, or maybe you have a cache set up at a private piece of land that you own. So you need a way to get from wherever you are in your town or home to that essentially safe place that you set up. For me, if I'm not home and able to grab my dog, I do not care where I am and I do not care what's going on. I am going home to get my dog. So even if my dog is in is at home and my home is in the hot zone, I am going. And I think that that's a mentality that a lot of people have, especially as it relates to loved ones. So I'm going so that's my mentality when I'm putting these things together. Okay, back to what I was talking about, the water situation. So you need a ton of water. Now I have cases of water. I don't keep a case of water in my car because the plastic degrades in the heat. It's 100 degrees today, so I'm not keeping that in my car. But what I am going to keep everywhere is a way to purify water. As a backpacker, I have a million different ways of filtering water. The first thing I'm going to show on screen, and I'm going to leave a link to everything in the description. So if you want to see the brand specific things that I use for my supply kit, you can check it out. But in no way um, are these like the best things. I think they're the best. That's why I have them. But, you know, opinions matter. Uh, so the first thing I have is a Sawyer Squeeze. Uh, I use this all the time for hiking and backpacking. I'm very familiar with it. It is going to filter water from an unknown source, right? So if I am not sure that that water source is clean, which most of them are not, then I'm going to use this. You want to be able, you want to have a way that's going to filter all things out of water. So maybe I run the water through a cloth first to remove sediment, and then I use a filter of some sort to purify the water from viruses and bacteria. Um, Sawyer Squeeze is really good. The other option that I have is the Life Straw. I know there's tons of controversy around the Life Straw. I keep it because it kills 99.99999 whatever percent of bacteria, which includes E. coli, removes 99.9% removes of protozoa, which is like Giardia, which is the thing that's going to, to make you sick and potentially kill you if you drink unclean water. Um, and then this one in particular filters 1,000 gallons. So, and it apparently meets the US EPA drinking water standards. So there's a couple things, let me put this down because that crinkling sound will probably sound annoying, but a couple things you wanna keep in mind is that these filters are extremely sensitive. So they can't be exposed to extreme cold. You'll freeze the filter and potentially degrade the filter. So if you tried to use it to drink um, unclean water or to use it to drink or filter water, you could potentially be letting some of that bad stuff through. I'll just call it bad stuff for, for ease of ease of use or for to make things simple here. The other thing that I normally keep on me is a small eyedropper filled with bleach because worst case scenario, uh, good old military days, you can throw some bleach in it and then you wait like 30 minutes or so and then you can drink that water. There is a ratio. I will leave that in the link in the description because you need to add a certain amount of bleach per measurement of water. I actually wrote that on the bottle um, that I have because I never freaking remember, but I'll leave it in the link in the description. So those are the two ways that you can filter water. Okay, so the next thing on their list is food. This is, <laughs> at least in the prepper community, is like some questionable thing. I personally do not like canned food. I have this irrational fear of botulism, which I know sounds crazy because I don't think anybody under the age of like 75 is worried about botulism, except for me. That was a curse back in my day. I don't eat canned food. Jarred food is questionable, but I don't eat canned food. So because of that, I have a couple different options. As a backpacker, I always have these freeze dried meals. This one in particular is by Pinnacle Foods. I have had every brand you could possibly think of from Peak Fuel to Backcountry to every type of meal you can possibly think of. And Pinnacle Foods, it's enjoyable. Like sometimes when I'm not even in the backcountry, I crave a Pinnacle Foods meal because they're that good. I have no affiliation to them other than the fact that I just freaking love them. So I will carry something like this. However, um, and also because it's super easy to carry, however, these are 
they're calorically dense, but like this one in particular, this is their creamy Tuscan chicken. It only has 850 calories. And I say only, that's a lot of calories. But I say only because if you are in an emergency situation, you're going to want to carry calorie dense food. According to FEMA, they want you to carry a three day supply of non perishable food. Um, I would say non perishable will mean things that don't expire right away. So the other option is a brand like this. <laughs> and this, for anybody who's just listening and not watching, is ReadyWise. Now, I run drills in my house before each season to simulate a lockdown essentially as best I can. I also backpack and stuff like that, but to shelter in place, uh, because that's something that I didn't practice before COVID, I will have one of these meals and I'll ration it out and I'll do kind of like a calorie breakdown to determine, you know, how long is this going to last me? Stuff like that. These are fucking delicious, dude. Like straight up these ReadyWise meals. I haven't had any other brand like this that's sold in these big buckets, but these, they're delicious. And inside of there, they have breakfast and like lunches and dinners. They have snacks. There's like freeze dried fruit. There's milk. There's all sorts of stuff. They have like cereal, you know, cause if you're in an emergency situation, you have to drink and you have to eat and drink like dehydrated stuff or you have to rehydrate your food. It's, you know, to make the situation less suck a little bit less, it's good to have some good food, right? Just you, but you want to be reasonable, right? You have to have things that are calorically dense that are going to keep you alive, essentially. Ready Wise, I think is phenomenal. Again, no affiliation, but, and to put my money where my mouth is, just so you guys know, I'm not just some random person who has an emergency kit. When we went into lockdown, I didn't need shit. I was able to shelter in place in my house for three weeks before I even thought about going shopping, like Instacarting things and whatever else. I didn't need a single fucking thing. I didn't need toilet paper. I didn't need food. I didn't need anything. Granted, I was in the comfort of my home. I grow a lot of my own vegetables. But in terms of like survivability, I was entertained and I was happy at home. If I had to be displaced from my house, I imagine being in like a camping or backpacking situation with my dog at the time. I had both of my dogs during COVID. King passed away a few weeks ago. I won't get into that because I'll cry on camera. But I survived just fine. I had enough food for me, for my dogs. If the power went out, I was not worried. I have a generator. Like that into that for me reassured my skill set and reassured my level of preparedness. Does that mean I'm prepared for everything? No. But I was not preparing for a quarantine and the fact that the unexpected hit us and I was prepared means that I at least know something, right? I know a little bit about what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing, man. The next item on this list is a flashlight and I have a few different options for you. I'm a huge Nightcore fan, just brand loyalty. So I have their EDC 27. I carry this on me every single day. I also have a similar flashlight to this one. It's another one of their EDC series in my emergency kit bag. And this goes up to like a thousand lumens. It lasts forever. I, when I tell you that I use this flashlight every single day, I use this flashlight every single day because I walk my dog whenever the hell he wants to go out. He's a little spoiled right now because we're both in mourning, but he, if he wants to go out at night, I take this with me. I live in wine country, there's coyotes, there's not lights everywhere. So I depend on this flashlight. The other thing is I am rocking a Garmin Tactics 7. Um, not because I think I'm super cool by having this tactical watch, but because uh, of the functionality of it. Do a lot of aviation stuff. I am training to be a pilot. So it has flight planning and things like that on here, but also it has a fucking flashlight. If I double tap this button, and if you're not watching this, I'm about to go like full blown Power Ranger on your ass. But if I double tap this, the flashlight comes on. So this is kind of like a backup. It's obviously gonna drain the battery. I can, there's a couple options. I can make it green. I can reduce the intensity, but it's a nice little like backup, I guess. And I keep my my watch charged all the time. But another reason why I bought this watch is because it's solar. So I can charge it. Just another tool, right? Redundancy. But let's say I'm displaced for a week and my watch dies because I didn't charge it in the sun or something and my Nightcore EDC 27 flashlight dies. 
The other option is, drum roll please. The other option is this hand cranked flashlight. I'm not gonna do it right now because I'm gonna look hella stupid. Let's see. So you pull this up, it has a little, oop, there it goes. <laughs> it has a little winding thing, I don't know if you can hear that. But you can wind it up and then turn it on and it's not battery operated or anything. The other thing is it has this solar panel on the side. So you can, um, you can put it out in the sun and charge it if you're in inclement weather, because let's say you are displaced because of a flood or a hurricane, chances are you're not in the eye of the storm. The storm hasn't passed and it's cloudy. You can use this. This is by a company called Thorfire. I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. I bought this shit on Amazon, but it works phenomenal. I've had this for four years and whenever I go through my kit and test it, because I do change my kit up depending on the time of the year. So right now we're going into a little bit of colder weather, even though it is still fire season. I live in the middle of three of the most prominent fires in California right now. It's still colder at night. So I'm going to change up my kit to include some cold weather items, which I'll get into in a minute, but keep that in mind. The other thing I want to say is that I also live in a fire zone. Every time there's a fire, I get a public alert on my phone letting me know that I am in the warning zone, meaning that if the fire moves an inch in either direction or in any direction, I have to evacuate. So it is even more important that I have this stuff prepared. Now, again, fires and earthquakes are my biggest threat other than man-made events. They're the most likely. So when I'm preparing, I don't play what I call the what if game. I experience this a lot being a security professional. It's like, what if this happens? How do we keep ourselves safe and secure? What if that happens? We have to operate within reason. What is the likelihood that that thing is going to happen? So I prepare for the most likely. However, I want to make sure that I have a kit and a skill set that will kind of get me through anything that life throws at me. So flashlight. Now the next thing on the list is a first aid kit. I do not buy and I do not recommend you buy a pre-made first aid kit that is like a cute little like pouch or bag that has like all the band-aids you'll ever need in it. They suck. They absolutely suck because they need to make money somehow, right? So you're going to get an emergency kit that has band-aids of every size and like a thousand Q-tips and nothing else that you're going to need. Or it's going to have a bunch of shit that you don't know how to use. So like, if you've never used a tourniquet, then why do you have a tourniquet, right? I think everyone should have a tourniquet. I think everyone should learn how to use a tourniquet. But if you don't, you have two options. Don't use it or learn how to use it or bring it in the event that you happen to be with somebody who knows how to use it. It's only because you, you can cause more harm than good. Even if you don't mean to, it is a possibility and it has happened. So bring what you know how to use. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple of things. Like I said, this place is a mess right now. You can't see it, but there is gear all over the place. Um, so a friend of mine got me this as a gift. It is called Survivor Wear. And it's like one of these pre-made kits. I opened it up, it's not bad, but I'll be honest, I tore it apart and like added things that I wanted in here. So if you do get something like this, again, this was gifted to me when I went through my like medic course and it was a good gesture, but again, not entirely practical. But if you wanna have something and this makes you happy, I guess, go for it. I have my medical kit, which I'm gonna go through with you guys right now. So, and I'm gonna do like little B-roll shots of this. So if you can't see, again, within your skill set, I have a different skill set than most, but I'm not like, an emergency doctor, I'm not a trauma surgeon, so this is very limited. I have a variety of these SAM splints because I think it's more likely than not that I'm going to experience or I might run into somebody who's experiencing a broken bone, right? So, or something along those lines. So I have that, some sort of orthopedic emergency. Other things I have are a thermometer. This is a brawn thermometer because I can use this for me and my dog. Uh, it goes in his ear, <laughs> um, but it has uh, covers that you can use. So I don't have to worry about sterilizing it, although I can because I do carry alcohol pads, but this can be used for me and my dog. So dual purpose for me. I have a stethoscope, which again, you don't need. 
unless you want to carry a stethoscope, I guess. But I have that because this is my kind of some of the stuff that I include in my everyday kit because I do carry things on me all the time. Um, I also have this quick little med kit. Now this is what I carry on me daily. And this is going to include things like, like I have this for blisters or hot spots. I have a bunch of band-aids. I have alcohol prep pads. I have iodine. I have band-aids in a variety of sizes. I have an N95 mask. I have a regular mask, like a surgical mask. I have gloves and some Neosporin because this is what I use 99% of the time. Not to jinx myself. Well, I think she missed all the vital organs, but uh, don't jinx it. But I don't normally need, for myself at least, a splint or anything more advanced than that. I also have these hand warmers, which I always add to my kit, um, no matter what time of the year it is. And that is Legends, singing the song of his people. I have a blood pressure cuff. Um, I have an SBO2 monitor. Again, this is kind of like my daily little thing. I have some trauma shears. These were a gift. This is a Leatherman set that has my name on it. I have a CPR mask. I have... Dun, 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 dun. I also have some tape and some other uh, ways of bandaging, essentially. I also carry Luca tape, and I will, again, leave links to all of this. And then in this little dry bag, which I think it's always good to have a dry bag on you, this is a Sea to Summit dry bag. It's one of the uh, smaller ones. Inside of this dry bag, I have some other things that we'll go through in a second. I have paracord. Now, this is the paracord that when you split it open, it has individual nylon strands. This is the paracord I definitely recommend, not that cheap shit that they sell on Amazon. This is quote unquote military grade. If you've ever been in the military, hearing military grade is frightening. But in this case, it is a standard, a mil spec, that this cordage has nylon strands on the inside. And it's rated for 1,000 pounds. Then I also have some hygiene things. So I have another thing in Neosporin. I have a toothbrush, toothpaste. I have this Sea to Summit Wilderness Wash, uh, which is multi-purpose outdoor wash. I can use it for my hair. I can use it for my body. I can use it to wash my hands. Um, I also have a thing of lotion. So just small little kit. Again, I carry this stuff on me all day. Well, not all day, but anytime I leave the house. This right here is a waterproof case for a Bic lighter. Um, I usually carry a Zippo lighter on me. I have the butane lighter and I also have the kind of the electric one. But inside of here is a, is a Bic lighter. It's just a way to keep it um, dry. And then what I did was uh, to keep the cap on, I used some bank line. Bank line has... A ton of purposes on its own and then some other things that I keep in here are um, for my ladies I have some honey pot wipes um, guys I think they there's a brand called deed wipes just wash your ass right that's basically what that is take a shower wash your ass and then on this business card I put some duct tape because I'm not carrying a whole fucking roll of duct tape I just I don't even know how many times I wrapped it around. I just wrapped it around till it was thick as shit. So I wrapped some duct tape around this business card. It's a plastic business card, like one of those fancy ones. It's mine. So I always have duct tape on me. Duct tape is really good for repairing things. So I, it's good to have. And then on another business card, I put electrical tape and some more cordage because you can never go wrong with any of that. And for this cordage in particular can be used to set up like an A-frame tent or um, set up a little bit of a line that you can drape a tarp over if you are looking to shade yourself or um, protect yourself from the elements. And the last thing is a nail clipper. Um, it's just, you know, good to have. You can, use this, you can use this to get out splinters. The file on the inside can be used for a ton of different things. Hey guys, I wanted to interrupt this video real quick and remind you that my free guide, Wellness, Wisdom, and Warfare, A Veteran's Guide for Mastering Life, is now available for download using the link in the description, or if you go to my website, jessieverga.com slash free guide, or it's under the podcast tab, you can download it for absolutely free. It's over 60 pages of just tips and tricks and things to help my veterans out there master their health, master their fitness, master their mental and spiritual health, just things that I've learned through my journey 
as just a veteran and that I've learned as an educator and as a professional in multiple fields, as an entrepreneur. I put all these things in one place and I have put it together for absolutely free. So again, link is in the description or if you head to my website, jessieverga.com, you can download it for absolutely free. So, okay, I'm gonna pull all this stuff in. Again, I'm not like a wilderness guide. I'm not even necessarily certified in wilderness medicine, although that is the next thing that I'm going to be getting into. But based on my experiences as an emergency, as a federal emergency responder and as emergency manager, a manager, <laughs> along with being an emergency manager, uh, this is just what I feel is the most practical to help me be prepared for anything. I am going to go through my hygiene kit real quick, which is a little like out of order on the list that I have, but I just wanted to show you guys some some of the ways that I switch things up depending on the pack. So my like summer pack um, is a little bit lighter. I use a completely different bag. This bag is able to carry this. So some other things that I normally carry that I might have in a separate kit or maybe seasonal, but other things that I carry that I'm just gonna include while we're talking about like first aid, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna group first aid and hygiene together, but I carry um, some comfort items like I don't know if I would consider tampons comfort, they're more like a necessity, but I carry tampons, um, I carry an extra diva cup, I carry, and if, dudes, I'm sorry, <laughs> TMI, but like if you have a wife or if you have daughters or sisters or a woman that you could potentially be escaping to safety with, then you might want to consider this um, in your emergency kit if they're not going to prepare one for themselves. I have hair ties, a comb, some tissues and deodorant. I keep it all in a Ziploc. And the reason why I keep it in a Ziploc is because the Ziploc is multi-purpose, especially when we're talking about tampons and like a leave no trace. So I will use the Ziploc as a garbage bag. I also will carry again, toothbrush, toothpaste. I have Vaseline because that has a ton of different purposes. And then a comfort item. This right here is a collapsible straw. So this is by a company called Ello. It just comes out of here and it's a straw. Um, there's a few different reasons why I carry this. Not because I think I'm going to be bougie in the backcountry, but um, <laughs> bougie in the backcountry. Um, sorry, made myself laugh at that. But mostly because there are a variety of reasons that I can use this. And I won't get into that right now. Uh, I will also carry <laughs> sunscreen. Since you, you need to have sunscreen. This is Glow Stick by Super Goop. Um, I have a couple different versions of their sunscreen. They have a spray on one. They have one just for your face. I carry the stick because it's easy. And I find that this holds up well in my bag in hot temperatures. It doesn't melt and get all over the place. So very important, especially if you're gonna be exposed to the elements. Exposure, lack of food and water are the things that are going to get to you before anything else does. So keep that in mind. Other things to consider are gonna be packs of wet ones. Now, keep in mind, if you put this in your pack, it's not a set it and forget it usually. These things will dry out, which if you want a pack of dry wipes in your bag, cool, I guess, but I will swap these out occasionally. So I'll buy new ones, put the new ones in the bag, take this out. It's another reason why it's really good to go through your pack throughout the year. I go through my pack every season, so three to four times a year to make sure that nothing has expired, all that other good stuff. The other thing I wanna include is first aid for your pet. So this is styptic powder. This helps stop the bleed. So if your dog has a minor cut, then you can use this. Most people are familiar with this because it is what you use if you clip your dog's nails too short, or if the vet does, they're gonna dip their injury into this powder. It is painful, it stings, your pet's not going to like it, but it's good to have. Now, I noticed that this expires this month, so I went and bought a Stiptic pencil, which will help you get things that might not be your dog's fingernail. Maybe they have a small cut. Maybe you guys were walking through the woods and they scratched themselves on a thorn bush, right? And you want to just throw a little Stiptic powder on there so it doesn't get infected and it doesn't bleed. So, good to have. Um, I recommend also having this because this is going to be a lot easier to like dip their toe into if you cut their nails too short. So 
Again, I only carry one of these and I just keep it in the emergency bag because I don't clip my dog's toenails. He is always, we're always going on long walks and that does the trick. So something else. Now for my backpackers out there who are watching this, like this bitch's bag must be a hundred pounds. You're right. This is the mini version of a first aid kit and everything that I just went over. If you're watching this, it is an old pill bottle <laughs> and a larger one that I have put a paracord bracelet around that has a whistle. Okay, I can't really get to it because I didn't unclip it. Um, it has duct tape on it, some hair ties, and some paracord. When I open it up, it has um, iodine prep pads, it has alcohol pads, it has a bunch of band-aids, and a very small Bic lighter. So if you don't want to carry a big kit and you just want to have something small and compact, I recommend something like this. Paracord bracelet is probably overkill. I do have paracord. I do have bank line or banker's line, I think is what it's called. And I have something called microcord. This is the Atwood Rope MFG. So this is a 36... 36 meters by 1.18 millimeters, AKA 125 feet by 334 inch. Anyway, it's hella small. Also really good because it's really strong. It's a hundred pounds, hundred pound limit. But anyway, you can use any of this if you don't want to use paracord. I had a friend in the military make me this bracelet with this whistle clasp and, um, it does two, it does, it's little kit right here is everything that you need. This is what I normally carry um, on backpacking trips. And then I just clip this bracelet to the outside of my pack, mostly because um, of the whistle. I want the whistle somewhere where I can reach it. Okay, leaving first aid kit and hygiene kit now. Let's talk about batteries. The next thing on this list is extra batteries. I do sometimes carry extra batteries, but most of the stuff that I carry with me that's electronic is rechargeable. I do have this headlamp. This one in particular does require batteries. It requires AAA batteries, so I carry some of that on me. But this is my backup headlamp. Other than my flashlights, lights plural, I always have a headlamp on me, but I'm going to get into that when I get into my little toolkit. Um, they're all rechargeable. So I will normally carry a power bank on me. This is a 20,000 milliamp battery, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 20,000 milliamp hour uh, energy brick by Nightcore. This thing has two USB-Cs and two um, USBs. I have charged, I have three cell phones, long story. I have charged all three of my cell phones and my laptop with this thing, not necessarily fully charged, but to a point where they, I knew they were in the green. So I love this thing. This is what I'll carry with me and this is what I will use when I am charging my headlamps and my phones or anything that is electronic in my emergency kit. Now, I keep this one on me all the time. I have an anchor battery that I will sometimes throw in my emergency kit, but yeah. Just have one of these on you. The anchor battery that I have is a Solix battery. It's a little bit more robust. It has, um, it's AC DC power. Again, carry that if you want to, if you want to put in money for that, but this should do the trick if you're talking about a, a go bag. The next thing on this list is a whistle. Now I tie my whistle to the outside of my bag. Yes, there is one on that um, paracord bracelet, but I carry a legitimate whistle to the outside of my bag because if I'm in an emergency and if something happens and assuming that I am not detached from my backpack, I want that whistle somewhere I can reach it that is accessible in case I am injured and I need to get somebody's attention. Also having the ability to whistle without needing a device is helpful. So. Um, feel free to look that up. I'm not very good at that. My dad used to be able to do that called taxis in New York. Um, before I get into knives or anything, this Gerber, I think it's like a Gerber wilderness knife. I bought it at the PX. It has a whistle on the end of it. Um, I don't know why I did that. Um, it also has a ferro rod and um, 
all that good stuff. It also has like emergency signals um, chart on the back of it. But the um, ferro rod and it, uh, the strikers on the back of the knife. Anyway, I thought this was cool. I bought it because I collect knives. But having things that are multi-purpose or dual use or try use is going to be your best friend in an emergency preparedness situation because it's going to lighten your load. So having things like this is actually pretty good. So consider something like this. All my knife enthusiasts out there, you're going to uh, scoff at this. How dare you, you insolent peasant! But for the novice who isn't a knife aficionado, this is really helpful. Most of us have seen movies on how ferro rods work. Although if you've never used a ferro rod to start a controlled fire, I recommend that you try it somewhere safe and somewhere that fires are allowed. In California, where fires are allowed requires a permit. So um, just, you know, don't break the law, guys. Okay, the next item is dust mask, which I talked about in the first aid kit. I carry a surgical mask and a 95 mask. Um, and this is just to help filter contaminated air. It's not meant to protect you from contaminants in the air. It's meant to, you know, if you're trying to walk through, like for out here when there's a fire, the sky is filled with ash. It makes breathing a little bit more difficult because you're inhaling actual ash. So to prevent that and to help breathe a little bit easier, you want a mask. It's not going to help with the smoke, but, you know, you do what you can. Now, plastic sheeting and duct tape is next on this list. And this is for shelter in place options. So now let's talk about shelter. And this kind of brings me into kind of the purpose of these bags. My, wherever I have an emergency bag, it is to get me out of that place. So the emergency bag at work is to get me out of work and to somewhere else. And that somewhere else is home. The emergency kit in my car is to get me and basically my car out of whatever situation we're in and to safety. The emergency kit in my house is to get me out of my house and hopefully to my car or to safety. So in my car, I have like a blanket and pillow and, and things for my dog and comfort items if I'm going to shelter in my car. If you're not going to shelter in your car or if you are displaced from your car, your car breaks down, whatever the case is, you're going to need another means for shelter, something to get you out of the elements. And that um, is where backpackers shine because we have tons of things. So the first thing is a tent, right? You could absolutely have a tent. I have a few different tents. I have trekking pole tents and I have freestanding tents. In this case, I would use a freestanding tent, meaning when you put the tent together, you the tent does not need to be affixed to the ground so you can pick that tent up and move it somewhere else if you need to, right? That's essentially freestanding. It is standing on its own. Whereas other tents, like a trekking pole tent, require a trekking pole to maintain its shape and form. So you can't just pick it up and move it. So you want a freestanding tent. But because we're talking emergency situation, I have a freestanding tent in my car, but in this bag at home and in the bag at work, I carry something called a bivy. So for bivvies, I have the Black Diamond Bipod Bivy in yellow. Um, I don't really consider, um, if I'm using this, it's not to self camp. It is because I need help. And I'll include pictures of this and some B-roll of this guys, but a bivy is a small enclosure, right? Like literally it's just, it's a plastic bag around you, <laughs> right? That has, in this case, mine has like one single arched pole that goes through it that um you know lifts it off my body so I'm not literally sleeping in a bag and it's obviously ventilated but it's just meant to protect you from the elements so you're in a sleeping bag it's it's like being in a sarcophagus so am I saying that right sarcophagus it's like being in a fucking coffin right I am a little claustrophobic in that thing but the one that I have you can open it up so it's just like a mesh screen and I got a this one is pretty large the one I have is pretty large so if I need to toss my dog in there too, he will fit. Again, it's just an emergency situation. There's also something called a ranger roll. I was not in the army. I love the concept of a ranger roll. 
Um, I'm not going to get too much into the weeds on that. If you are an army or if you are a ranger or are familiar with the ranger role, feel free to leave a comment. One piece of that ranger role is a essentially like a poncho. And that poncho, you can open it up and it doubles as a tarp. And that plus some paracord will equal a makeshift tarp tent. So that's something that you can have too. Again, emergency situation, you're just trying to keep yourself dry, right? Or out of the sun or whatever the case is, somewhat safe, somewhat sheltered. The next thing is moist towelettes, garbage bags, and plastic ties for quote unquote personal sanitation. I keep most of my stuff in Ziploc bags and I use those as garbage bags. Moist towelettes I talked about, we talked about the wet wipes, things like that. Something else I wanna mention is these Duo, I'm gonna say this wrong. This is an antiseptic, antifungal wipe for dogs. I bought these for my boy King who passed away, um, but I keep them and I use them on Legend because if you're going into an environment that maybe your dog's getting ash and then your dog gets cut or your dog develops like a topical infection, you can use this to clean them. So again, for me as a pet owner, I'm not just worried about my safety and first aid. For me, I'm worried about the safety and first aid of my fur baby. Okay, next thing is manual can opener. Again, I don't eat food out of cans. If I needed to, I would be screwed because I don't have a manual can opener. So if you are going to have canned food, make sure you have a way to open them. I guess I wouldn't be entirely screwed because I do keep knives. I could do it old school, I guess, like that homeboy from Home Alone, right? <laughs> um, so you could do that. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention when I was mentioning food is I have a bunch of these titanium sporks. They have a long handle so they can get into that um, so they can get into that food bag. Also something to keep in mind. Um, I'll get into kind of the food stuff a little bit later because that for some reason is not on this list, which I think is crazy. The next thing is local maps. Um, because I don't want the internet to know where I live, or at least if you're going to find out where I live, you're going to have to work for it. So I have one of these. This is a map of all of California. If I needed to figure out where I was or where I'm going or alternate routes to get to somewhere safe, this is what I'm using. Um, it is a detailed topographic map, but it has everything. Um, I also have apps on my phone, right? I have Onyx Backcountry and Onyx Offroad if I needed to kind of look and see, because I think this, the one thing about maps, especially an atlas like this, is they are updated all of the time, right? Think of every, at least in California with all the housing structures being built and roads being placed, this is probably not the most up to date, but I keep it because it's a topographic map. Um, that doesn't usually change too much, but yeah, you wanna consider also having a map on you. Even if you just print out like a Google map and laminate it, I have actually have one of those where I printed out a local map and it's laminated and that is in my car bag. So I have redundancy. Again, not gonna show that to you because y'all don't need to know where I live. Other things on this list include cell phone with chargers and backup batteries. Already kind of went through that. Other items they have are cloth face coverings for everyone ages two and above, soap, hand sanitizer, disinfecting wipes to disinfect surfaces. Already have that. This is under their additional emergency supply section. Prescription medications, definitely need to have that. Non-prescription medications such as pain relievers, anti-diarrhea medications, antacids, and laxatives. I keep that in the first aid kit, but put it wherever you want. Um, infant formula, bottles, diapers, wipes, and diaper rash cream. I don't have a baby, so I don't have any of those things. I have baby wipes, but like I don't got bottles and diaper rash cream, so if you got a baby, bring that. Pet food and extra water for your pet. This brings me to a point I wanted to make about the Sawyer Squeeze. The Sawyer Squeeze has the ability to filter water from wherever into a larger container, whereas the Life Straw is a straw. So if I need to purify water for my dog, it's gonna have to come from the Sawyer Squeeze. Or, again, my next point is going to be the ability to boil water is the next best thing. You wanna boil it, I believe the recommendation is 10 minutes. So I have this jet boil. I only bring this in the 
winter time i have smaller setup like i have the msr pocket rocket um, i have two of them one for my emergency kit and one for backpacking trips this does really well in cold weather because of the jet boil technology um, and i'll show you guys real quick if you're watching this but there are these um, let's see if i can get that into focus there are these like grates on the bottom which protects the flame from wind it also allows for um, a more efficient diffusion of the fire so it boils and quote unquote cooks evenly inside of here is i also have a couple of these is a fuel canister this is butane is it it is isobutane my bad um fuel and i have a ton of these in variety of sizes but I keep this because I don't use this for backpacking anymore. I'm trying to lighten my backpack a little bit, but I, I bring this with me because worst case scenario is I can boil water for my dog and I. Another way to boil water for your food, to rehydrate your food, most of the food requires warm water. You can also cold soak, which basically means you put cold or room temperature water into or with the food and you just let it sit for like hours. <laughs> so. That's also an option, worst case scenario. Now, pet food. My dog used to eat raw, now he eats farmer's dog. So I can't exactly keep a couple bags of farmer's dog food in my pack because it's perishable. So I will buy the freeze-dried raw food, which um, is basically like the dry version of raw food because he eats a more natural diet and I wanna keep him consistent because the last thing I need is to switch his food and throw a bag of kibble in my emergency bag and then he has diarrhea and is dehydrated during an emergency situation. So I try to stay as close to his normal diet as possible to reduce the likelihood of him getting sick in an emergency situation if we are displaced. So something to consider. Next thing is cash or traveler checks and important information such as copies of your insurance policies copies of identification, bank account records. I keep all of those things in this fire retardant envelope. This is a huge envelope, but it is a security fireproof bag. This has all of my important stuff in it. I'm talking passports, birth certificates, copies of my driver's license, copies of my dog's medical records, I'll keep a USB in here with other important information and I update this envelope and that USB all of the time. I need to make sure that if, God forbid, something happens and I need to start my life again from scratch, I have everything in here. The next thing they have on this list is a sleeping bag or warm blanket for each person. So I have this. This is a wool fire retardant blanket and I have a ton of these. Um, they're not cheap, they're also very heavy, but I keep one of these in the car, one of these with my bag, and one pretty much in every room of the house. Again, I live in a fire zone, but this can double as a warm blanket. It's in wool. If you're in the military and if you ever use a wool blanket, you know this shit is warm as shit. So, and you know, it helps. And it's fire retardant, so there's that. The other thing is I use all of my retired camping gear as emergency gear because it's still useful and it still serves a purpose i just have upgraded or moved on to a different thing so like right now i sleep with quilts when i'm in the back country but this is the nemo discord this is a zero degree sleeping bag i'm sorry this is a 15 degree sleeping bag and this right here this is the women's one um i keep this usually loose but this time of the year since it is fire season i will keep it in its stuff sack so the size it reduces down to like the size of a little bit bigger than a volleyball or basketball, whatever sport you relate to the most, soccer, whatever, a ball. And I will keep that in my emergency kit. So now my emergency kit is a 55 liter backpack, basically. And this sleeping bag will go in that. This sleeping bag can go inside the bivy, can go under your tarp, can go inside of your tent, right? This is a synthetic sleeping bag, meaning if it gets wet, it's not gonna act all fucking weird like a down sleeping bag. However, there are a lot of things that can degrade 
the integrity of the insulation, meaning it won't keep you as warm. So keep that in mind, which is also why I keep it lofted like this, because if you always keep it compressed, it's going to reduce the efficiency of this, of this bag. So again, sleeping bag. And for my doggy, I just bought this from Costco. He used to have another jacket. This is like a cute little, little jacket for my dog. Um, this is, this one's extra large. I forget how much this costs. It was like 20 bucks, I think. It wasn't very expensive, but just a little extra something for my baby. So he also has a shirt, like a cute little like PJ shirt that I, um, that I keep in the bag for him. Just again, comfort items and to make sure that he's okay. The other thing I wanna mention is a sleeping pad. So this is the Nemo Quasar 3D. I don't use this sleeping pad anymore on backpacking trips. I have um, a lighter, more efficient sleeping pad also made by Nemo. I use the Tensor now, but um, I have this sleeping pad. You wanna look at the R value, which is like the survivability rating. This is a decent R value. I would consider this more like a three season. So if I was gonna try to sleep in like the snow or below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, I this might not keep me entirely warm. But again, we're talking emergency situation. I have an extra one of these. So I throw this in the emergency kit. Another option whoop, that you might see is one of these foam pads. This is by Xped. It is an insulated mat. This has like a low R value. The higher the R value, the warmer it's supposed to keep you. This does not have a very high R value. Again, this is an extra one. Like I just had this laying around. So to be honest with you, I don't normally keep this strapped to my bag. I'll keep this like in the car. But if we're talking about winter situations, I can throw this down, throw that sleeping pad on top of it, and now we're cooking. Again, I'm tailoring this emergency kit to just kind of like things you should be thinking about. If you want me to do an in-depth review on any of these specific items or skills I'm referring to, let me know in the comments and I will absolutely, you know, cover these things. Okay, the next thing is a complete change of clothes appropriate for your climate and sturdy shoes. In here, I have a complete change of clothes and a pair of shoes. They're uh, straight up a pair of chucks in here. Older pair of chucks. Again, we're talking emergency situation, not Friday night. So pair of socks in a Ziploc bag, right? Military will tell you, you wanna fix something, change your socks. I have some shirts, I have some like yoga pants, and then I got these bad boys right here. Can't go wrong with these. One of the reasons why I chose these is because they're made of such thin material that they'll dry quickly if I get them wet. I have transitioned to barefoot style shoes and these are a bit narrow. So when one of my barefoot shoes kind of hits the end of life, um, and I say end of life, meaning like they get kind of tore up, I'll probably throw them in here as long as they're not like completely tore up. Like there's holes and shit. Um, the next thing is fire extinguisher. I do have a little travel fire extinguisher that's kind of affixed in my car. I have them throughout my house. There isn't necessarily one in, like within my emergency bag for several reasons, but fire extinguisher is on this list. Next is matches in a waterproof container. So I have these by Survivor Wear. So if you open them up, um, they are obviously... They don't look like regular matches because these can get wet and still work. There's a strikers on here, but you can honestly strike them on most things. And then it goes into this case, which has a gasket that keeps them dry. Now this is a redundancy because I showed you that Bic lighter, both of those Bic lighters. So again, redundancy. I also have some other options for fire starters that I won't get into today. I will do a fire starting video the next time I'm in the back country, um, probably not in California, the next time I'm in the back country somewhere where I can get a camp, I can get a fire permit because right now you can't do that, right? We're in fire season. Next is feminine supplies and personal hygiene items. I covered most of that already. Sorry, dude, but like talked about the tampon thing. We talked about the honey pot wipes or some sort of um, way to clean yourself which is extremely important. Hygiene is so important, especially in the backcountry, especially in an emergency situation. Plus, it, it's gonna improve your mood, right? You wanna be grimy all day and displaced. So just throwing that out there. Next is mess kits 
paper cups, plates, paper towels, and plastic utensils. I showed you guys my titanium spork. I don't have paper plates and all those sorts of things because I'm not trying to create more trash. However, I do have some collapsible cups that sometimes I'll throw in here. Again, my Nalgene, I have a water bottle, which I forgot to bring with me, but I have a water bottle. You can use your hydro flask. It's just, as long as you have a way, if you, as long as you have some sort of mess kit, right? In my car, I have a little tote with some cooking supplies, like old Stanley camping stuff that I don't use anymore. That's in my car. That stuff is way too heavy to throw in my home bag, like my home emergency kit bag or in my work emergency kit bag. So I usually carry things like this jet boil to keep it compact. Because the other piece of this is I'm trying to be agile and God forbid we're in an emergency situation, I need to carry my 100 pound dog. So the last thing that I want is a heavy pack and to be holding a heavy dog, it's going to slow me down. So I can't make my dog any lighter, So I can, but I can make the backpack lighter. I can make myself lighter or I can make myself stronger. So I guess there's that. Kramer's got more muscle, higher protein content. The last thing on this list, at least, is a paper and pencil. So I have this. This is wallet, purse, whatever you want to call it. This is a, it's a little like kit, but inside here, I took all my shit out, but like inside here, I have like my IDs and my debit cards. I have this field notes notebook. Um, it holds that. I have some cash on the side. It's always good to have cash on you. I have some other some other items in here, important items that I want to keep on me, my veterans ID, my military ID, all that other stuff. And then in this main pocket in the front, I have a little right in the rain, like a quick little notebook. If y'all could see how big this is, it is like two inches, it's like two inches wide by like four inches long. It's a cute little notepad, but I keep this in here for like quick notes. I have a regular pen, but inside here I have a right in the rain pen. This is more to keep you uh, preoccupied, but there might be important information you need to write down. Maybe you get instructions from a first responder. He gives you directions on how to get somewhere or how to do something. You can write that stuff down. So important to have. And it zippers up, by the way. I also threw on these, um, I threw on these Max e Expedition pulp, like these little pull tabs, because it's just a little easier to grab. I don't know, it might be unnecessary. I like it. And then like the very last thing on here is books, games, puzzles, or other activities for children. I keep a pocket Bible. You can keep a pocket, whatever holy book that floats your boat. Um, I have some like Bhagavad Gita scripture quote books that I will sometimes keep that are the same size as the pocket Bible. Um, I'll keep things that entertain me. Again, not a necessity. Okay, so now let's get into some things that I carry that are not on FEMA's list that I think is in, that I think are important. Some of the other things that I carry are uh, is this air light towel. This is for hygiene purposes. It packs down it packs down really light, and I no longer use this for the backcountry. I have another towel that I use. Um, I also carry like a Kula cloth, which is um, an antimicrobial cloth that females can use after they go to the bathroom, after they pee, basically. I also carry something like a backcountry bidet, which is just something that you screw onto the cap of a water bottle. There's a certain way to do it where it's nowhere near your rear end, but you can clean you can clean yourself without getting like poop particles on it. I'm not gonna get into any of that uh, hygiene stuff, but I carry this air light towel. This is, um, you know, just a dry towel, just to clean myself off. If I boil some water, I can, you know, do a little like hoe bath, whatever you wanna call it. Other things, and I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna open this up, but this is, uh, if you're, if you were in the military, if you're a female in the military, you got issued a shiwi, which is like this rigid plastic funnel, so you can pee standing up without taking your pants off, especially if you were like deployed and you didn't have access to facilities, and you know, you don't want to pee in front of a bunch of dudes. You have this thing. This is essentially the same thing. It is like the civilian version. It is silicone. It's easier to clean and it collapses. I just keep it in this case because it's a little bit easier. I'm not gonna take it out, but if you guys are interested, 
I found this one on um, I found this one on Amazon. Had a ton of really good reviews. People had no issues cleaning it. I've used it several times and it works really well. It just allows you to pee standing up. So, you know, one point females, I guess. Now for the moment most of you have probably been waiting for. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go through some of the other things that I carry. Okay, so the first thing that I want to include is this EDC toolkit that I carry. This is by Maxpedition. Inside here, I have a ton of stuff. <laughs> um, and I'll just, because I have folks that are listening and not watching, I'm gonna go through kind of real quick some of the things I have in here. I have another Right in the Rain notebook. I have a headlamp. I have a Knipix, I might be saying that wrong, instead of pliers. There's actually two pairs of pliers, but I took one out and threw it in another uh, kit that I have. I have a pry bar. I have a uh, pocket knife sharpener. It's a cheap little one, but I have it. I have these, I have these really awesome utensil set. I also have, by Mulwark, I have a tool set. So I have screwdriver and I have that night court headlamp I was telling you about. I also have, this was a gift, but I have a little knife in here. It's a Damascus steel knife with my name on it. And yeah, so that's what I carry in this little tool kit. Um, and this is something that I generally keep in my car. It's not necessarily in my emergency bag, but it is my car emergency bag. Just something to consider. And I'll kind of go over my EDC kit in another video, but a lot of these things are redundant for what I have in my EDC kit. What is 100% in every single one of my bags is this little Maxpedition kit. And in here I have a ferro rod, a pen, a pencil, a Sharpie, another right in the rain pen. I have a, this is by InCharge. It is a USB kind of like conversion cable, but this goes with that battery power pack. So, and I'll show you guys real quick on camera, but it is, if I can get to focus, there we go. So it is a USB, this is probably not all in focus, but I'll show you guys in B-roll. It's USB, if I flip this down, it's USB-C, it's USB-C, if I flip it down, it's an iPhone charger. So it has everything that I need to charge all of my devices. But I just got the iPhone 16, so it's official that all of my devices are USB-C. Thanks, sweet baby Jesus. The other thing I keep in here are Ranger beads. If you've never used Ranger beads, uh, buy them and try it out. They're pace setting beads, so you can count your paces. So the first thing you need to do is figure out, you can do it in yards, you can do it in feet. Um, I do it in yards. You need to figure out kind of your pace. So how many of your steps does it take to equal a yard, um, and then you kind of just go from there. So, um, or meter, or whatever you want to measure it in. I know there's gonna be a bunch of army folks that are gonna be so like, that's not how you use that. Um, they're just pace beads. So once you figure out what your normal pace is, you can use these effectively. Because unless you know how many of your steps equals a meter, then you can't do nothing with these. So figure that out and then you keep track of how far you're walking with these, and that's what you do. That brings me, since we're kind of talking about navigation, and for all my folks that have never done land nav, I have this. This is a Sunto compass. This compass, let me open it up, also has a signal mirror. I highly recommend that you have a signal mirror if we're talking about emergency situation and you need to signal for help. This is, a uh, Great to have. If you don't know how to use a compass, there are a ton of YouTube videos that talk about how to use them. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. Um, or maybe I will, I don't know. Let me know if you want me to do that, I will. But if you know how to use a compass, if you have a map, and if you have some pace setting beads, you're set. Honestly, the beads are probably, I know somebody's gonna be mad about me saying this, but the beads are probably optional. If you have a map and a compass and you know how to use those, and you know how to triangulate your, your position, and you, knew how, you know how to stay on a bearing and walk to a certain distance. The best example I can say is you are lost in the woods, but you notice that there is a tree that maybe was struck by lightning, or maybe has a funny mushroom growing on it, or maybe has some fun 
bear claw marks marks on it and you're like I see that tree very well it's different than all the other trees and it's in your bearing you walk to that tree when you get to that tree you look at your map you look at your compass you make sure you're heading on the right bearing you look down that bearing for another landmark and you walk to that but things that are in within reason and as you start to learn your pace and kind of what does one meter look like what does 10 meters look like how does a kilometer feel right in terms of like how do i feel after i've walked a kilometer or a 5k which is three miles right once you do that it's so much easier to navigate but again that's kind of where the the ranger beats at least the way i use them i was an army that's just the way i use them right feel free to correct me i don't fuck care another thing that i carry are these candle tins it's one wick beeswax so if you need to start a fire and let's say you're in like wet conditions or you're having trouble making kindling or you don't have the tools you need to make kindling but you maybe have some like somewhat larger pieces of wood and you know that you can safely make a fire these last for four hours so you light one of these maybe you dig a little hole you light one of these assuming you have a lighter um and you start to put the wood on top of it. And basically, this is just the way to start a fire. That's all it is. It burns for a really long time. So if you're having issues with your flint and steel or whatever the case is, these are a good backup. Okay, I saved the best for last. So in terms of personal protection, because we are talking about an emergency situation, hopefully this doesn't violate any of YouTube's rules, but I carry a Ruger P94. This is a 40. Yes, I have smaller firearms. I am licensed in the state of California. Technically, I'm licensed in the entire country, but I digress. So I carry this on me for sure, right? It is on my CCW card, the whole nine. But this is what I use for personal protection. I have, this is also one of the only firearms that I have like more than six mags for. Um, some of my other kind of like handheld I'm gonna say hand pew pews. <laughs> um, some of the other smaller firearms that I have, I don't have as many mags for. That's my fault. I need to get more mags for them. But I carry one of these. Now, depending on the type of situation, I will carry a long arm. But I don't have time today to go through all of those. I'm gonna keep the slide back. Um, this firearm will protect me. And when I say protect me, I'm more so thinking like I'm displaced and I'm in the backcountry. And maybe for whatever reason, I need to protect myself against wildlife. Although I'd probably be the first person to pet a mountain lion. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but it's just for, it's just personal protection. I'm not going to say any more than that, but I believe in my second amendment right. So I have one of these on me. You don't have to have one of those on you. It is not going to necessarily affect your ability to survive in an emergency situation if we're talking about natural disaster. The next thing I want to get into are knives. I love collecting knives, not to carry on me necessarily, but I love just the craftsmanship that goes into it. So I have a buddy who used to work with when I worked at a gun store. Um, he started making knives. The company's called Sage Blade. The guy's name is John. He's amazing. He made me this knife right here. Well, he didn't make it for me. Um, he just made it and I bought it. It has a mammoth tooth, I believe, or tusk inlay. And that's pretty fucking cool, right? So um, it's a smaller blade. And the reason why I carry one of these, um, it has a Kydex sheath. And the, the reason why I carry this is more so if I need to catch and trap an animal, I can prepare it while I'm in the backcountry. And... While I would love to survive on berries and leaves and shit like that, I'm going to need protein, so will my dog. And if I'm in a, some sort of situation that requires that, I have this. It can also be used as a tool. If I need to cut, think, you know, if I need to cut some of the paracord or bank line or whatever, um, I, have, I have this. I also have, and this is more of something that I would use to, um, to prepare an animal if I was in a hunting situation. This knife, I'll be completely honest with you. I got this knife years ago. It is 
it's a little more comfortable. It has this little lip right here, and I'm trying to refer to things in a way that's easy to understand and that I can describe for listeners. But basically it has a little like lip or a little stopper, if you will, that prevents my hand from continuing forward should I need this to prepare an animal. Because if you're preparing an animal, there's gonna be blood. There's hopefully not gonna be a ton of fluid, but there's gonna be blood and it's gonna get slippery. And if you've ever dressed an animal before, you know that having a knife that has that or a really good grip will prevent your hands from slipping forward and cutting yourself. Um, it comes in a leather sheath. I believe I got this from a Native American outpost and it actually has a seal on it from Oklahoma. Okay, moving on. Speaking of Sage Blade, he also made me this cute little tomahawk. Um, this is more so for fine, like for me, you can totally use this to dress an animal. It's a tomahawk. But for me, I like it because I can do smaller tasks like making kindling and maybe I get bored and I wanna like make a like whittle something, I don't fucking know. But this tomahawk is a little bit easier. I also like that it has this like pointed edge here so the sheath is not the greatest, but it does the job in the way I store it. I usually have something here that prevents it from falling out because it just kind of like slips right out. So there's also this tomahawk. And the very last thing that I'll talk about is my hatchet. <laughs> this is a Helco Work hatchet. I can't, I don't remember the specific model. I've had this for a while now. I also just bought this like leather piece right here. Uh, and this is just so it's a little bit more comfortable on my hand. But um, this is primarily for chopping wood. I'm not gonna chop down a tree with this. I do have a full size ax in my car, but this is going to be kind of like a good in-between. It's, I, I will be able to do finer stuff with a knife or that tomahawk. This is more so for like splitting wood and making larger pieces of um, firewood. So if I'm trying to chop down a tree, I'm gonna need a full blown ax. And I have one of those by the same company by Helco Work. There's a few different reputable kind of European ax companies. I know Gerber and a couple other brands are trying to enter the ax industry. They've been doing it for a little while now, but there's just something about these axes that are a lot better. I do have the ax puck that I will keep with me. I keep a really small one so I can sharpen it in the back country. I will leave links to all these things in the description if you wanna check them out. But again, don't buy this shit and put it in an emergency bag if you're never gonna use it. That's kind of like the key point here. If you never intend on attempting to start a fire safely again, um, if you don't attempt to go camping or go into the backwoods and try to use this stuff, it is f***ing pointless. Do not do that. If you've, if you've never tried to make a tarp tent, if you've never set up a, biz, a bivy or a tent, if you've never done any of those things, it is pointless to have it then at least occasionally turn it on. Like I said, I bought this cheap ass hand powered flashlight on Amazon years ago. I check it a few times a year. Every time I go through my emergency kit, I literally go through and check everything. I kind of go into it with a positive mindset that I'm glad I'm prepared and I have these things. I hope I don't need it. But a lot of these things are associated to some good memories that I have of being in the back country. So I enjoy going through my gear. I enjoy going through my kit, but also I enjoy being proficient and having the skills. With that, one more thing. I lied, two more things. The first thing is rain protection. This is a little rubber ducky raincoat for my dog. I have a couple different things that I use. So I have a raincoat. Um, there's a couple of YouTube videos and I'll, maybe one day I'll do a video on this. There's a way that you can roll up your raincoat into itself so it maintains this roll. This one just came out, so it's a little jacked up, but I have a raincoat for myself. I also keep a pair of frog togs. It's F-R-O-G-G-T-O-G-G, -G -G, I believe is how you spell it. I'll leave a link for it in the description. But basically, frog togs are um, really cheap. They're like 20 bucks, but they're just rain protecting. There's no pockets or anything like that. This is a black diamond raincoat. This is pretty expensive. It has all the bells and whistles. I had it, it's an extra one. So I throw it in my emergency kit. So other than keeping yourself dry, the other thing I wanna mention is a shamog or a scarf. Now, a couple of things, sun protection for sure. The other thing is that this can double as a brace. So you can use it to, if, 
you know, dislocate a shoulder or you break an arm, God forbid, or like whatever the case is, it can supplement your SAM splint in isolating the motion or the range of motion you have with the affected area. So you can use this to make a sling, essentially. Um, the other thing is that this one's pretty large. I bought this from 5'11". So I have also experimented in the backcountry. I haven't found a really good way to use it in this way, but I was, I would try to use it as a bit of a sunshade using some of the paracord and even some bank line to try and like open it up to make a little bit of a roof. So just something that I experimented with. It, it's not waterproof, so it's only going to protect you from the sun. But again, I like carrying a shemag on me. It's, or a scarf, if you will, just something good to have. Okay. Wasn't the most organized video that I've ever had. I literally just winged it because I have an emergency kit. I just opened that shit up for you guys. And I pulled up what is recommended, kind of went through what I have as it relates to what's recommended, and then some. If you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up. If you have any recommendations, maybe there's something that I don't have in here that you would recommend, or maybe something that I forgot to go through. There are some things that I did not include because they are extremely specific. However, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or any recommendations. And with that, I will see you on the flip side. Mm -hmm.